Thank you very much. I'm actually very honored to be here at the uh, anti-aging uh, conference. I'm, I've enjoyed it very much. This is actually my first time um, either presenting or uh, being here. I've uh, enjoyed it because it seems like this is the kind of group that will take these emerging technologies that are coming out of the scientific field and are not afraid to apply them in, in their practice. And so um, I was very pleasantly surprised with this. Uh, I was uh, very happy also <clears throat> to uh, hear Dr. Uh, Grossman's uh, introduction um, to the future of anti-aging. And he mentioned nanotechnology as being one of the uh, sources of, uh, of our future bridges to, to uh, anti-aging medicine. And um, nanotechnology is an absolutely fascinating field. I've worked in it. He actually only talked about possibly the tip of the iceberg of the things that are actually coming up in that field. There are other emerging fields of science that are also very exciting and uh, will have application to medical science in, in, uh, over many, um, in many years. Uh, however, um, I'm here to talk about a whole field of science that is emerging. It's called uh, redox signaling and regulation. Um, this is a growing field of science. It's very exciting. Uh, there are several books being written on the subject. Uh, my favorites there are Redox Biochemistry by Ruma Banjari. Antioxidant and Redox Regulation of Genes uh, is a compilation of scientific papers peer-reviewed uh, on the subject. Um, in, and you can go down the list. Uh, the, there's a journal actually devoted only to redox signaling. It's Antioxidant and Redox Signaling Journal. You can look that one up. And of course, in, uh, all over the world, there are many conferences also that are um, focusing in on this uh, area of science. In fact, every major university now has a, a department that uh, is doing research in this. There are hundreds of papers coming out. I can't possibly um, read them all. <clears throat> so why, are, why is everyone so excited then about redox signaling? Uh, redox signaling is uh, fundamental and universal to all processes of life. And I, I'm serious when I say that. Uh, it's present in uh, prokaryotic primitive organisms, in eukaryotic organisms. It's present in plants. It's part of the innate immune system of almost every uh, complex organism that uh, exists. And um, these little redox signaling molecules, which I will introduce to you a little bit later on, um, are uh, caused to uh, mediate several multiple cellular defense and repair and replacement mechanisms. And I'll just mention a few of them. Uh, DNA repair, antioxidant regeneration cycles, oxidative stress. In fact, these redox signaling molecules are the components of oxidative stress and they do a lot of signaling. Uh, cell division rates, tissue regeneration, blood flow regulation, vasodilation and constriction, inflammation and antimicrobial defense uh, mechanisms, uh, leukocyte ad adhesion to the endothelium, immune response, protective enzyme production, efficacy, cellular apoptosis, death domain messengers, vascular regenerations, and many more are underneath the uh, auspices of redox signaling. And uh, this list is expanding exponentially. Um, in fact, it's very exciting to see, um, but it's a little bit confusing because it affects the uh, biological organisms in so many areas. So if you were to actually sit back and look uh, and stare at this list for a little bit, look at the research, uh, you, I have uh, seen sort of a pattern emerging in what um, redox signaling actually does inside the body and uh, many others then have been working on this, uh, this same bend. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce to you uh, what the redox signaling molecules are. Uh, they're just simple rearrangements of the uh, dominant molecules that exist in cellular fluids, meaning water, sodium chloride, 
nitrogen. Um, now, the body, via many different kind of mechanisms and enzymes and uh, in electron donation processes, will take these uh, simple molecules and then rearrange them to form reactive molecules. And uh, through reduction and oxidation methods, and that's why redox is uh, so named, uh, these, reduct these uh, reactive molecules then are um, uh, manufactured by the body. Uh, hydrogen peroxide, many of you know, is, uh, is very bioactive and chemically active. Nitric oxide um, is also very active in you know, many of the signaling processes in the body. Uh, superoxides and, and hypochlorites uh, play very important roles in the immune system. And uh, there are more than 20 other kinds of molecules then that exist, uh, uh, redox signaling molecules that exist as part of this redox signaling network. And so uh, what do they do? Um, first of all, we have mentioned that they're very reactive. In fact, uh, uh, they're categorized in the literature into two areas, reactive oxygen species and, and reduced species. So, for example, the reactive oxygen species has uh, free radicals in there uh, that can cause damage and aging to, to all of your tissues. Um, and uh, they're also strong oxidizers and reducers and participate in, in almost all of the uh, cellular processes. Um, and uh, by themselves, if you isolate them, they're toxic. So, uh, the body sort of does a balancing act, I suppose, like juggling knives. It uses these toxic molecules as, as signaling messengers and, as, uh, and, and in other biological um, capacities. But uh, they're difficult to work with uh, in the laboratory because they're so reactive. They will uh, pretty much uh, degrade. Um, so wouldn't it be nice if we were able to form a stable combination of uh, these reactive signaling molecules. Um, now let's even go beyond there and say, wouldn't it be nice if they were non-toxic? <laughs> How about if they didn't react with your environment so that we could actually store them? Um, that would be pretty neat also. Um, very well. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that la later on. But the body has its beat in this regard, um, because as far as I've studied, and I'm not a physician, and I, I have nowhere near the uh, medical knowledge that uh, many of you do, but um, the body is, is able to produce large amounts of these uh, mixtures of reactive molecules in balances that are, that are non-toxic.